bad weed experience. I actually have had a lot of them, uh, especially early in my career when nobody really knew I smoked weed like that. What happened was, you know, I've just, look, there was one time back in, uh, what was it, probably 2012. <laughs> it's like early 2012. Uh, when I first got with Funk Volume, you know, I was with Hobson and shit. I was kind of getting used to like the juggalos and like the contacts in the eyes and like the fans being like a little devilish and like, you know, it was just, it was real different from what I was used to. Being with Hobson, you know, um, I was just kind of running around with him, just kind of learning the industry. He was doing meet and greets and, you know, Dame just wanted me to kind of watch Hobson and how he operated to see if it was something that I would be able to do. And I remember that I got off a plane, my plane was late, and I had no time to find the weed or smoke or anything. So I went to Hobson's meet and greet, and I found two kids that had to, you know, they said they had to fire. I smoked in their car. It was actually in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Is that how you say it? Minneapolis. Minneapolis, yeah. That's where I was, man. And uh, I thought they was going to bring weed so we could roll up, and they just brought their bong, this big-ass bong. And I hadn't smoked all day, so I was like, fuck it. You know, I hit the bong. I started feeling a little weird. I'm not even going to front. Like, and when I went back upstairs to the hotel, you know, Hobson had one of his contacts in and the other one was out and he was like doing some shit. And it just, it scared the fuck out of me. Like, it just threw me all off. Like, I don't feel like it was laced, but I just, I feel like I hit the bong way too hard. And I went upstairs and I was kind of panicking about the shit that I already thought was a little weird. It just kind of started, it was overwhelming for me. But that was probably the only like bad experience that I had smoking with the fans. When somebody promise you the fire and brings you something less than the fire, it's always equally disappointing to me. So pick it up and it's just, it's not green. It's some shit that looked like they found it and just decided to give it to me. And yeah, sometimes I give it back. Sometimes I'm struggling and, and you know, I try to you know, make it work. <laughs> that was back in the day. It's been a while since I accepted some bad weed though. You know what I'm saying? What makes the Dizzy OG so special, man? Um, everything is so green and fluffy and it tastes so good. The flavors are fire. It comes from the Guala. I know a lot of weed experts. We've tasted a lot of buds in our day and we really enjoy this one. We think it's one for the market. So uh, it's a lot of people behind the Dizzy OG as far as the taste factor and how it's grown and the quality of it and you know, all of that. So we try to take it serious and make sure it's some fire. When I don't get my Dizzy OG, I like to go to the dispensaries and check out all the flavors, see what they got. So holla at me. Uh, I'll be smoking a crown. Um, I like to go to a lot of the different dispensaries and just pick the flavors and just see what flavors is out there. I don't think you should hold yourself to one type of strain because you'll miss out on a bunch. But it's a lot of strains that I fuck with. But I just remember that time when, when everybody was just hungry and grinding and, and just had, just put it on the line to chase this music. So the shit wasn't easy, that's for sure. Young potential out there trying to do whatever you want to do. Once you find who you are, like stay true to it. And that's just so cliche, but it's so real. You know what I'm saying? Because. <clears throat> the people who get into the game from the first day they you've seen them step in the game and that has been whatever like that's been true to whatever that is that you first seen throughout yeah. the whole time you just latch to that more it's fucked up because hop he don't smoke at all he don't drink he don't do anything like that he doesn't he, you know shouldn't be having these kind of problems in Iceland with the police you know and they shut down the spot and they bring in this little fucking dog man they run the dog up and around and all that shit and uh, we're all sitting there sweating bullets. So the 151 is hitting our asshole and other girls just like licking the shit. And next thing you know, the girl just starts screaming like, ah, ah, ah. I guess the shit was burning. 